So here's my studio. I normally have my gameplay on the 4K monitor there. I've got my Twitch chat there. I'll have my OBS studio there. So that will be stream manager. And then I'll have Spotify open there or I can use that monitor for other weird stuff as well. But what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna press on the Stream Deck the launch routine. And here it is, the multi-action switch button, which I'm gonna be going through today. Watch this. Spotify opens, goes onto the monitor up there. Stream Manager opens and will full screen. This opens here, OBS Studio, and goes to the starting soon screen. And then the lights turned on and went purple as well. How cool is that? <laughs> Okay, so I'm really excited about this video and maybe it's just the nerd in me, but I think just being able to press one button and do so many things to make your life really, really easier on the Elgato Stream Deck. I just, I don't know, it just gets me excited. Call me a nerd, I don't care. So yeah, recently I did a video a few days ago where I showed how you can use Windows Mover to place like windows on different screens at the push of a button. This is really, really useful. It's a plugin by Bar Raider and it's just so easy and useful to use. It takes a few seconds to set up, but I realized that by doing that, I could then do a video about the multi-action switches. Now, I really, really like the multi-action switches within the Elgato Stream Deck because they allow you to have lots and lots of different triggers, delays, and really your brain is the only limitation on how you can use these things. You can do so many things to make your life easier. So I'm gonna go through two scenarios today, both using like the multi-action buttons and the multi action switches scenario one is going to be going to a be right back screen launching a twitch advert and setting the volume a little bit higher whilst you're on the toilet having a whatever you do on the toilet scenario one so that's really really quite a simple straightforward thing to do but it does involve you installing a spotify plugin to enable you to control spotify and i do have a video which i'll link below and on the, the card above of how you can do that i do have something like 20 different stream deck tutorial videos so feel free to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of those scenario two is going to be a lot lot more complicated. What I'm going to be doing for scenario two is launching my stream OBS. I'm going to be launching Spotify. I'm going to be launching stream manager, full screening stream manager. I'm going to be launching my Philips Hue lights, turning them purple. I'm going to be setting the starting soon screen all at the touch of one single button. And, and honestly, this took about five or 10 minutes to set up. It's really not difficult to set up. Let's go. So first off, what's the difference between a multi-action and a multi-action switch? Well, fundamentally, all a multi-action will do within the Elgato Stream Deck is allow the triggering of one button. So you press one button once and multiple actions will happen off the back of that one button press. What actions could be triggered from that one action? We can have an unlimited amount of actions that trigger, including some delays that you can add in and all the rest of it. The actual actions that you can have there is really down to your creativity and the integrations that you've got on your Stream Deck. So for instance, if you happen to have a button that changes the colors of your lights with Philips Hue to purple, that is an action that you can place in a multi-action. Now a multi-action switch is a very similar thing. The difference is you have one set of actions from one button and then once it's pressed, it then flips to another set of actions. So as the name suggests, it's a multi-action switch. So let's say for example, you want a load of things to happen when you press a button once and then you want a different set of actions to happen when you press the same button again. For example, like turning something on, turning something off, or turning multiple things on, multiple things off. That's what the multi-action switch is. So you've literally got like two columns of actions that you can configure from the same button. And then you can customize the button name. You can customize the button color for each of those two switches. So hopefully that makes sense, but I will demonstrate this as well within the video. So what I'm going to be going through in this video, the two scenarios, as I mentioned earlier, one will be a very simple multi-action to change to the be right back scene in OBS. Then we're going to run a 60 second ad on Twitch and then we're going to set the volume to 60% on the music. The changing to be right back scene requires the OBS Studio plugin, which I'll show you. Running a 60 second ad needs the Twitch plugin on the Elgato Stream Deck and then setting 60% volume requires the Spotify plugin, all of which I've done videos on and I will link in the description below. Scenario two is going to be a lot more complicated. You're going to open Spotify, you're going to place Spotify on the screen at the top. It's going to launch OBS Studio in administrative mode. Admin mode, if you didn't know, means that you avoid a lot of lag and it prioritizes the computer's resources towards the program. Of course, you want that to be your streaming software because obviously you want the best quality for your viewers. Place OBS on a secondary side monitor and then it will resize it larger. So I don't want it to just be half of the screen. I actually want it to be a little bit more than half the screen so that the preview on OBS is a little bit larger. Again, this is very specific to my setup, but I just want to give you a flavor of the things that you can do. We're going to launch 
launch stream manager in Chrome. So that's obviously Twitch stream manager and a website. I'm going to place the stream manager on the chat panel above, and then we're going to click to full screen that. So we'll actually just basically get more bang for your buck. The Chrome will see the full screen. You won't see all the tabs and stuff at the top. Then I'm going to turn on my studio light with Philips Hue, and then I'm going to switch those lights to purple. And then I'm going to set the OBS screen scene to starting soon. So I will be able to press that button. It will open all the programs that I want. It will place them exactly where they need to be and it will turn on my lights and it will get me on my starting soon screen. Okay, so quickly, I'm just going to illustrate a multi-action switch we can drag on and it's from the stream deck, which is a default installation. So you should already have the stream deck buttons. These are the stream deck buttons that are listed, but once you place the multi-action on the board and you double click into it, it does then change the list of options that are available. You can't put a multi-action within a multi-action as far as I can tell, because it's removed those options here. A multi-action switch is just underneath that here and just looks slightly different. It's got like the exclamation point there, just indicating whether the switch is on or the switch is off. Now, if I click on the multi-action switch version, there's also a radio button here. Just move my camera out of the way. So there's a radio button here, so you can customize the look and feel of this button when it's pressed, and then when it's pressed off as well. At the moment, the default button is like this indicator as to whether or not it's on or off. Now, if I just double click into the switch button, we can see that there are two actions. So we've got when it's on one, and then when you press the button, the actions that will happen when you press it again. I'm not going to go through the multi-action switch into too much detail here, because I think it's pretty obvious what this does. And once we've gone through the multi-action itself, that should make it a lot clearer as well. So in this multi-action, we've got the three things that we need to do. First, First, we need to install the OBS Studio plugin here just to get through this. Now, I've already got the OBS plugins installed here. To install plugins, you need to go to the main menu here in the Stream Deck app. Click on this icon here, and then you go to plugins. OBS Studio, I think, might actually be a default installation on here. That's why you may not see some of the plugins here if they're already a default. So to configure this multi-action, we want to go into the multi-action itself, double click. We want to drag in the scene, and this is an OBS Studio scene. Now, all we're going to do is select the actual scene that we want it to jump to. And in our case, we're going on the B right back screen. So you've got the option here to select from the scene collection. And I'm just going to go to my B right back here. So that will switch it to the B right back screen. If I want, I can give this a title. But to be honest, this is just an indicative title just so that we know what this is called within the multi action. Switch to BRB. Just gives it an indicator for when you come back to it six months later. Now, if I press that multi action switch right now, it would simply only do that one action because there is only one action there. What I'm just going to do is add a slight delay here. So there is under the stream deck button also delays that you can add. And I'm going to have this this delay set to half a second, so 500 milliseconds. I'm going to put 0.5 delay as the description. So that'll just open the Be Right Back screen, have a half second delay, and then I'm going to run an advert. This will use the Twitch integration here. So I'm going to drag in from Twitch to play an advert here. And now I've got the option within this button to select the duration of the advert. I'm just going to go with a 60 second advert. I'm saying basically I'm going to the toilet for a minute. And finally, for this very simple multi-action, I'm going to go to the Bar Raider Spotify integration. I have done a video all about how to set up the Spotify integration to so check the description here and I'll probably leave a card somewhere as well. There's a button here that's a volume set. I'm going to drag this volume set in here. I'm just going to set the volume to 60. So that just turns the volume up of the music a little bit whilst I'm away. Now, because I'm recording on OBS Studio, when I press this button, it'll send this recording to the Be Right Back screen for my stream uh, and it'll do the delay and it'll run the ad and so on. And you won't actually see a lot of those things happen. So there's no point in me actually demoing how this works. Finally, you can customize the multi-action logo here. You can select from a file or you can open the Stream Deck icon library, like a, a picture or whatever. Really, really simple, straightforward multi-action. Now I'm going to go through another routine that I've already got. As I've said, as I mentioned earlier, this is the routine I do to press the button, to place everything in its areas, open different applications, set the lightings, all sorts of stuff. I've got a folder here called Launch Routine and I can have all kinds of different buttons within here. I've got this multi-action here, which I'm going to open up. And again here, the objective is just to give you guys some creative juices and give you like a flavor of what the multi-actions can actually do if you use them in the right way. This is a lot more complicated. As you can see straight away, we've got something like 12 different actions on there. First of all, it opens the Spotify program. Now, there are a few different ways you can do this, but I've used the system key here, which uses the open tab here. And when we configure this, all you do is select and navigate to the app file location. So that will first launch Spotify. There is another way that you can do this, though. There is also a Bar Raider advanced launcher. Now, the advanced launcher, the, the key difference here is within the advanced launcher, 
If I just bring this in and show you as an example, you can still do the same thing, select a file to open, you can give it a name, all that sort of stuff, but you can choose it to run as administrator, which then pops up a permission. You have to accept that permission and it will then run it as administrator for you. And that's the key difference. We don't need it for Spotify, but we are going to use that one for OBS Studio. So then what this Windows Mover does, again, I'll link the card above and in the description below the video I did just a day or two ago for the Windows Mover and Resizer plugin. Really amazing plugin. This will literally move Spotify to my 37 inch monitor and I've chosen a specific application here. I've chosen Spotify as the application. I've placed that application on the screen that I want it to do. And then I've said, get current Windows coordinates. And then it's locked in what those coordinates were. I've then also told it to resize. So if Spotify happens to open up in the wrong size, this application, this plugin will resize it to the right location on the monitor. Now I've opened a website here on Chrome. So this one uses the system key again, but instead of launching an application, we're going to be launching a website. Now, when I click on this, you'll see we can give it a title and then you just need to type in the name of the website. It's as simple as that. So the full URL, including the HTTPS forward slash forward slash all that good stuff. So you can see here, this is opening up my user stream manager link. So this will open stream manager in Chrome. Then I've set a delay, which just allows the Chrome to actually open up and get into its routine. Then I've used Barado's Windows Mover and Resizer plugin again. This time we select the Chrome application. I just have to bear in mind here, if you've got multiple instances of Chrome open, this may kind of mess with it. So what I make sure I always do is not have Chrome open when I run this routine, that when it opens up Chrome, it only has one routine to work with. The reason why I do that is because it then has a two second delay whilst it's being resized and moved onto screen. I then have a system hotkey that presses F11. So if you press F11 whilst you're in Chrome, it will full size Chrome full size of the screen and it just means you're getting more kind of real estate for the browser and you're not getting all the crap at the top. Now this one I did actually have a little bit of trouble with. I had to do some trial and error to make sure that there was enough time between it being resized and then doing full screen because what I didn't want to happen is it tried to resize on the screen it was on and then it tried to move to a different screen if that makes sense. Because even when you maximize Chrome that still doesn't full screen Chrome it doesn't get rid of the crap at the top and I'll show you exactly what this looks like. So here's Chrome open as normal. If I press F11 it then goes full screen like this. So in the context of Stream Manager, it actually gives you quite a lot more space. You can see here, that's it full screened and that's it not full screened. It doesn't look like much, but this extra space here is quite a lot of extra chat to get on the left hand side. So we're at the halfway point. We've got Spotify open. We've placed it on the correct screen. We've got Stream Manager open. We've placed that on the same screen and it's full screened as well. I've now gone to the Philips Hue integration. Again, back out of this. You can do a search here in the plugins for Philips Hue. There's a few different ones, but I think I've used the Elgato version of this, which is installed here. Now within the Elgato Philips Hue plugin, you've got this on off, which basically just turns on the lights for a specific scene, or you can actually choose a specific light as well. So this will turn on and off my entertainment area. Now within my man cave, because this is a group, there are multiple lights that are included in that. But that's not something I've configured in Stream Deck. This is something I've configured on Philips Hue itself. So on the actual Philips Hue app, I will be doing a separate video about that very very soon so it turns on my lights it then has a slight delay again of one second just to allow those lights to turn on and then we have Philips Hue color so it will change the color to purple and that just uses this icon here the color icon now here's probably the most complicated part here launch OBS studio in a similar way to what we did earlier but this time instead of using the system launch key here I'm using the bar radar advanced launcher plugin this uses the advanced launcher here and allows me to select the location of the .exe file here and it'll open this OBS 64.exe file to execute the program being opened but I've tagged it to run as a administrator. Now, if you don't do that, it will just run it in normal mode and it won't run it in administrator mode. If you don't have issues with frame drops and stuff like that, then you probably won't need to run it in administrator mode, but it's just a really quick tip just to enable you to run OBS Studio a little bit more smoother than you might otherwise do. What this has then done, we've used the mover and resizer plugin again from Barada. It then places it onto the side screen, my widescreen monitor, and then resizes it to be wider than half of the distance. I then have a three second delay. So I'm basically allowing the program to launch and re size for three seconds and then at that point i then have the scene switch which uses obs studio and the scene selector and then i've selected the starting screen and that's it that that will, that will do the routine that i showed earlier in the video spotify opens goes onto the monitor up there stream manager opens and will full screen this opens here obs studio and goes to the starting soon screen 
and then the lights turned on and went purple as well. So hopefully you found that useful. I absolutely love this tool. I just think it's absolutely brilliant. Bowraider, thanks for making a really genuinely awesome set of tools for the Stream Deck users to use, man. I'm super keen to know of how you guys are using this in your stream and for your workflows. Please let me know in the comments how you use them. I'll probably steal your ideas and I might even make a video out of the best ones. Once again, feel free to hit the like and subscribe and I'll see you guys later.